So here I am driving on the left side of the road from the right side of the car down the Great Western Road through Glasgow, Scotland. I had been driving in Scotland for only two days now, but still hadn't quite gotten used to it. Fortunately, the Akintoshan distillery was less than seven miles and only a 17 minute drive from my hotel. But I gave myself an extra 30 minutes so I could arrive early and take pictures before doing my tour. This is Eric Waite and I'm at Akintoshan Distillery. Come join me. When I visited the Akintoshan Distillery, I took a basic one hour tour, which essentially began in the souvenir room and covered the basics of whiskey production, followed by a tiny taste of one whiskey and a tiny sip of an Akintoshan and ale cocktail. But for the sake of my own personal study in this video, I want to delve a little deeper into understanding the Akintoshan Distillery and share my notes on the location, history, and production methods of Akintosh and Distillery, followed by a whiskey review and my own attempt to reproduce the Akintosh and Ale cocktail. The name Akintosh is a Scottish Gaelic term that means corner of the field. The distillery is located at the foot of the Kilpatrick Hills on the outskirts of Clydebank in West Dunbartonshire, near the Erskine Bridge. Akintoshan was built in 1800 and after its foundation, it changed hands multiple times and was bought by Edie Cairns in 1969, who completely rebuilt the distillery. In 1984, Cairns sold Akintoshan to Morrison Bowmore Distillers, 1989, Suntory invested in Morrison Bowmore. Then five years later, in 1994, they acquired 100% of Akintoshan's holdings. In May 2014, Beam Incorporated and Suntory Holdings Limited merged to create Beam Suntory Incorporated, who are now the owners of Akintoshan and other Morrison Bowmore holdings. If you tour numerous distilleries, after a while, you'll notice that you'll hear many of the same points over and over again, as there are some basics to whiskey production which all distilleries have in common. While some may find such repetition to be boring, I find it helpful in retaining what I have studied. I won't keep repeating these in my videos, otherwise you're going to hear 20 lectures on how whiskey is made. But here is what was covered during my tour in the Akintoshan Distillery. What is, however, probably useful is pointing out those things which are unique to the various distilleries. Akintoshan uniquely practices triple distillation, which is much more common in Ireland. Generally, the final stage of Scotch whiskey production involves distilling the fermented mash in two copper stills. In Akintoshan, a third, known as an intermediate still, helps to give a final spirit strength of 81% alcohol by volume. This triple distillation, in addition to an unpeated malt, gives Akintoshan a more delicate and sweet flavor than many other Scotch whiskies. We then tour the barrel warehouses. Akintoshan whiskey matures mainly in ex-bourbon barrels and ex-sherry butts, but some Akintoshan whiskies will also mature in French wine casks. The final and most important stage in our tour was tasting a wee dram of the Akintoshan Bartender's Malt. It is a limited release single malt from Akintoshan that's a product of their new malt order cocktail competition. Blends created by 12 bartenders from five countries 
were brought together to create the Bartender's Blend. Using whiskeys spanning five decades, the youngest of which uh, was six years old. And that includes whiskeys matured in ex Lafroy casks, rum casks, red wine barriques, German oak casks, and American oak casks. It is bottled at 47% alcohol by volume. They said that it was available only at the distillery. However, I looked online and it does seem it is available elsewhere. Um, generally, some of the other expressions I wasn't a real big fan of, but I really did like this whiskey. We were then given a thimble size portion of an Akintosh and an ale, which was quite tasty, which I will now attempt to duplicate from the website recipe. Alrighty, so I really liked the little sample that we had of the Akintosh and an ale uh, at the distillery. I'm not a beer drinker and I'm not a cocktail maker, but I think if I can follow the instructions, I should be able to somewhat duplicate uh, what I experienced. Um, so I have the uh, recipe off the website, uh, which I'll provide for you here. I provided the ounce conversion. Um, they put all everything in milliliters, so I also provided uh, the ounces. And uh, let's uh, give it a go. All right, so we start off with uh, 35 milliliters of Akintoshin American Oak, which is 1.8 ounces already. Um, so this costs about $33 a bottle American. I tasted some last night, so I can I broke the shoulder here. Uh, it's nice. It's I would say um, it's not the most uh, um, complex whiskey in the world. Um, so apples, pears, a lot of honey, a lot of vanilla, um, and definitely you can taste uh, the oak in it. And I actually tried it chilled as well, which I kind of like that. So we want uh, 1.8 ounces. I'm just going to go with the bigger side of the thingy here. And that's the technical word for this. This is the thingy. Lemon juice. It says uh, 25 milliliters of lemon juice or 0.84 ounces. Turns out I bought two of these small lemons and it worked out to be just about uh, one small lemon. So I already squeezed that, put that in there. 25 milliliters or 8.4 ounces of uh, honey syrup. Uh, basically you uh, heat up uh, in a pan, very low heat. Just a little bit of honey and a little bit of water, equal portions of honey to water. And so I already prepared that. This is two ounces here, so I'm only going to put about half of this in here. That's super easy to make. Probably takes you about, I don't know, two minutes uh, um, on the stove. Next, uh, 90 uh, milliliters of pale ale. So uh, 90, 90 milliliters of pale ale is about three ounces. Your Glen Cairn, about right there, is about three ounces. Combine Akintosh and American oak, lemon juice, honey syrup, and shaker filled with ice. Okay, I did that. Shake vigorously. Well, let's go this again. Combine Akintosh American Oak, lemon juice, honey syrup, and shaker filled with ice. Okay, I did that. Shake vigorously. Doesn't make any sense, but I'll give it a try. Now I'm feeling a little dizzy. Um, why don't we watch a professional do this, and uh, maybe we can gain some tips. Today I'm going to show you how to make an Akintosh in ale. For each drink, use 30 ml of Akintosh and American Oak, two teaspoons of sugar, half a lemon squeezed, give it a stir, give it a shake, top your glass with ice, pour it in and top with pale ale. One last stir and garnish with some fresh lemon. There we go. Welcome to the new malt order. Oh, so apparently you're supposed to shake the beverage in the shaker. Got it. They didn't say that. It just says shake vigorously. Into vessel with ice. 
Alrighty, I have a chilled uh, rocks glass here filled with ice, and it says strain into vessel with ice. Let's loosen the cap here a little bit. Well, that's just about right. Uh, top with beer. Okay, put a little more beer in there. And garnish with a lemon. A little lemon peel in there. Let's give it a try. Tasty. A little bit of a stir, and I think I want it just a little bit sweeter. So I just put a little bit more of the honey syrup. Mmm, mmm. That's all I need. It needed a little bit of a stir, and um, just a little bit more of the honey syrup. Mmm. That is delicious. Alrighty, um, if you subscribe to this channel, I wanna thank you very much. If you haven't yet subscribed, you like watching my videos, do me a favor, please subscribe, give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't tried this recipe, check it out, try it, and let me know what you think. Um, I use the most affordable uh, Akintoshin whiskey, which is what they had recommended. I wanted to go to maybe one of the higher levels, spend another 10, 20 bucks, or whatever, but this is one they recommend which I think is a really good um, mixing whiskey. And if you looked at the decorations on the wall of the tasting room, they really do seem to be geared towards uh, the cocktail market. Um, sure, the whiskeys are fine on their own. I like them by themselves. Um, but I think they really are ramping up towards a particular demographic, which is uh, we make really good whiskeys but they're particularly good uh, in a cocktail. So if you have any other recipes that you'd like to share with me, uh, leave them on down below. Until next time, Slanjiva. If you have benefited from my wine or whiskey studies and you wish to support this ongoing work, I ask that you become a Patreon supporter. The link to my Patreon account is in the description box below.